Dylan. Pretty, pretty good. Nice. Oh, wait. Yeah. Photoshop too. Okay. Yep. There we go. I create pastel landscapes um, of places that are a little bit important to me, I suppose. Uh, I like to experiment with my color choice, uh, make things look really vibrant, but sometimes different. Um, I really like to capture the way that light falls on landscapes and like structures and stuff like that. I've lived in Killington, Vermont um, my whole life. Um, I really just take a lot of inspiration from nature. I think it's really beautiful, especially in this state. Um, yeah, I really like uh, when there's moments in nature that are maybe unexpectedly beautiful, like sometimes you'll just be driving in a car and see a really awesome sunset. One of my pieces won a Congressional Art Show Award, a Judges Award, um, my piece titled The Drive Home. I think it won the award because the judge was looking for uh, a piece that really showed uh, artists that could really control the way that light looks within an image and the way that light interacts with the world and the colors around it and my piece really does that. Um, it captures a sunset uh, in Menden, Vermont uh, as a roadscape so there's a truck driving by and the sunset is sort of reflecting off the car a little bit and um, it's a December day where the snow is really light on the ground and I work a lot with colors and make it so that the snow isn't exactly white but really reflects the sunset. Um, and it's an overall really beautiful piece, I think. Yeah, that's why I want. I think it's one of my favorites, for sure. Don't be afraid of like, like really committing. And also like, it's okay to change things. Like, it's always, I mean, art is supposed to be like manipulated. Like, you don't have to stick with your original view. Well, my favorite piece is not one of my most recent. It's um, a paper cut. And I mean, I really like it because I put a lot of work into like the details in the tree. So like, in between the leaves, like cutting out a lot of tiny little pieces and I like I feel like the amount of work that I put in like helps with how much I like my piece. <laughs> I had to cut out tiny 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 little holes and like draw the tiny little holes then cut them out then like yeah but it just makes like the reward that much greater I feel like. What, like. what do you feel? Well I mean I just feel really proud when I'm done and like just accomplished. I love it. What do you love about it? Um, it's just really creative. I love, uh, part of her sustained investigation this year was using trash and like little tiny objects to make her art. And I've just always seen people like just using like a classic pencil or paint brushes and stuff, but she totally avoided that and like used little miscellaneous like items. And I thought that was so fun. And it was interesting to see like the type of objects she would bring in to use and like use that as a stamp almost. It was awesome. And, uh, <laughs> This year for my, invest my investigation, 
I um, worked a lot on surrealism and th I studied the surreal art movement and tried to incorporate that into what I was doing this year and a lot of my pieces are commemorating just like special moments to me and special experiences and I want people to feel joy when they see my art and I want them to I want it to serve as a reminder to be playful in your everyday life and have some fun. So I tried to romanticize like certain parts and aspects of my life. Like there's one of my pieces called In My Room and it's just about like going home and being in my room every night. I go in, out and do the goats because that's part of my chore. So it shows like my room in sort of like a mystical way and it shows like I really like Hello Kitty, so there's like a little Hello Kitty car with like goats jumping all around. And I don't know, I thought it was just like a fun way to see my everyday life. I, my mind is just blown. <laughs> like one of my favorite things about Daphne's work is like she always finds a way to like hide little, like just little details. Like, like for example, like, like a face in a tree or like a face in a cloud or something. It's so cool. Like it's always like, it's like a little scavenger hunt like through her pieces. I found that I really had no idea what I looked like until I started doing portraits um, and really just figuring out sort of the ins and outs of the human face and and exploring a lot of different styles. Some of my pieces are more impressionistic, some are more realistic. I played around with color a lot um, and some just basic line work, but I, I found that you know there was a lot I had to learn about how I perceive myself. I had a lot of sort of insecurities about how I looked that I've kind of worked through this year by coming to terms with what I actually look like um, and portraying it through art. So like some of my pieces, I used reference photos that were pictures of myself that I really thought were horribly unflattering um, or just pictures I really didn't like. Um, for a long time I didn't like other people taking pictures of me um, but since I started using those pictures as references for my art and art that I'm very proud of it's helped me gain a lot of that confidence. I want them to go home with the idea that art doesn't have to, that, that one body of work by one artist doesn't have to follow a very specific pattern or all stick to a very specific style. Um, and because a lot of my work, I mean, I've explored a lot of different media um, and I've you know, tried out a lot of styles of painting and mark making throughout this year and enjoyed all of them. And I sort of used to think I had to stick to one way of making art to be an authentic or like professional seeming artist. But I think what I've realized and what I'd like other people to realize about their own art making process is that it doesn't all have to be uniform to be good. Wow. So, and uh, now you're a senior. Thank <laughs> you.
I mean, it's kind of a crazy time of year because I'm graduating right now, so it's hard to reflect. But um, yeah, looking back on it, it was definitely a great experience in high school making art. I'm going to Penn State for architecture. So not exactly studio art, but definitely an artistic field where I can continue to be creative. I'm looking forward. It's a little scary. I just like, I can't believe that like this is, I have four days left in high school. Like it's just, it's just scary. I mean, it's. It's just crazy. It's scary, but I'm excited. I'm excited to go to college and meet new people, and I'm excited for where I'm going and who I'm going with. <laughs> UVM. Yeah, UVM. Um, I'm really, I'm, I'm looking forward. I'm, I'm very excited about the next four years of my life. I'm gonna go to Swarthmore College, um, and I have recently decided that I might do a, a minor in visual arts, actually, because I really don't want to um, sacrifice my love for making art for other academic pursuits. Um, I think I'm gonna major in religion towards my career aspirations, but I, you know, I really wanna keep doing art as a big part of my life, and I've loved this class so much. So that's sort of what I'm looking ahead to right now. Thank you.